Hey guys, so today I'm going to be answering the first of many questions that you guys have asked me in celebration of my 3,000 newly acquired subscribers. Uh, so yeah, I've decided that I'm going to do these questions uh, pretty much a video per question uh, and the reason for that is some of these questions are actually really quite in-depth and really quite interesting to talk about and I don't really want to have to gloss over them by doing say five questions in a video that's just and also there's a lot of a lot of variety in them as well so today I'm going to be answering a very technical question which is obviously not going to appeal to everyone who uh, subscribes and watches this channel so um, it's easier for you guys I guess to um, judge from the title uh, whether or not you might want to watch a video based on the question that has been asked. Okay, so today the first question, which is a doozy, comes from A. Hatsona, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name there. Uh, how do you feel about some of the admins of Debian wanting to fork the project due to the implementation of System D? Okay, so this is a very technical question. Actually, it's not necessarily technical, or at least how I've interpreted it, but rather surrounding the philosophy of Debian and how Debian works. Okay, so sister, so uh, first of all, I'm actually going to apologize in advance for any factual mistakes or mispronunciations of initialisms or anything like that, because this is certainly not my area of expertise, but it is a very interesting question, and I do actually really quite look forward to talking about it. So, uh, System D is a newly-ish developed uh, session manager uh, which has been making a few waves um, recently. Uh, I believe Ubuntu have implemented parts of System D um, in their distribution. Now Ubuntu is based on Debian and they've implemented I think some of System D with the intention of implementing more of it as of 14.04 Ubuntu but I could very well be wrong on that or it could very well have been delayed. I don't know if they followed through on that or anything like that. Um, and um, there were some uh, queries, questions, and, and, and people being a bit concerned about whether or not that would um, cause any, any necessary problems because at the time Ubuntu wanted to implement it, implement it System D was very new. Now, there's a, a, a big debate going on in the Debian community at the moment as to whether or not System D should replace the default session manager SysV in it. Um, now, a lot of people consider SysV in it to be old and, and, and a little bit redundant, but still kind of usable and most importantly fits within the philosophy of Debian. That's the big reason why people seem to be uh, against this kind of shift. Now, many people, as I understand it, have proposed a third solution, which is to not use SystemD, but try something, develop something newer, perhaps, um, something which is core to the Debian philosophy, um, as many people feel that SystemD isn't. So, um, this might seem like a little bit of a point. Why is there so much of a fraud over uh, a session manager? I mean, it's... it's um, it, it just seems to be a big thing to threaten to fork a project over. Well, first of all, I, I believe, judging from the, the website that was actually uh, included in the question, the ultimate intention isn't to actually fork Debian or to, you know, to, to actually walk out or anything like that, but that is considered the, should we say, the nuclear solution, the end solution, the, the thing that they're going to do if, no, you know, if all else fails. Um, and I think that would be an absolute uh, crime if that were to happen, if the, the Debian community themselves couldn't resolve this issue. Now, I'm not actually going to say what decision I believe they should make because that is very much up to them. How is it going to affect the end user? Well, if you use one of the uh, Debian-based distributions like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Elementary OS, Nopix, um, these distributions are rebuilt in such a way that they often switch out the session manager for something else. For example, even though um, Ubuntu were talking about using systemd at one point, um, they used something called Upstream, which I, again, could very well be wrong on this, but was something they developed in-house, and Canonical do quite a lot of in-house development. They, they mess with Debian quite a lot before it actually uh, turns into Ubuntu. It's, it's um, you know, we say that Debian is, is upstream from Ubuntu, but it's quite far upstream if you compare, say, the difference between, um, well, the difference between Ubuntu and Debian is massively larger, so, say, than the difference between Ubuntu and Mint, because Mint is based on Ubuntu, and then Ubuntu is, in turn, based on Debian. So the end user, uh, ultimately, in a, in a very practical um, way of looking at it, isn't going to see the difference, because if Ubuntu or Elementary or Linux Mint wanted to use a different ses session manager, then they could just switch out for a different session manager. That's, that's not a problem in the slightest. However, 
the bigger problem uh, that I see isn't necessarily one of a, a, in a technical capacity. Now, if I was a, a Debian, Debian developer, the technical side of things would be a much bigger concern. So I'm certainly, this is one of the reasons why I'm saying that my personal opinion as to whether or not um, SysV in it or, Sys, um, or Systemd or Upstream or whatever, you know, I'm not going to say which one's best because I don't have to work with it. And as an end user, I, I wouldn't really see the benefit anyway. Uh, I, uh, in the recent uh, new iterations of Ubuntu, I've not noticed any difference. Um, whether or not they switched it to System D from upstream from SysV in it, you know, it it seems to be pretty seamless. And and for that, I I think that um, developers on all sides have done a fantastic job there. So it's obviously up to the Debian community for them to resolve that particular issue. That being said. One of the things that I have a profound respect for when it comes to the Debian distribution, the Debian distribution, which is not only the base for so many desktop distributions in the Linux community, but also uh, some fantastic, um, uh, you know, work on servers and things like that, um, is that their, their stringent loyalty to their philosophy and their vision of what the world in terms of computers and its distributions and the internet should look like. It should be open, it should be free, it should be constructive, uh, it should be a community. And they're a lot more specific than those buzzwords that I've really just thrown at you. Um, they want to see, uh, you know, they're, they're very dogmatic towards their, their attitude on open source to the point where they don't even include Firefox in the distribution repositories because even though Firefox is a very open source program, is an open source program, the artwork involved with it does have some intellectual property attached to it. So they strip Firefox of its intellectual property and they, they call it something like Ice Cat, Ice Weasel it used to be called, and um, which, which has completely open sourced um, sort of, uh, you know, well, the, obviously the open source is taken directly from Firefox, but it also then has been stripped of its... Um, icons and, and, and graphics and things like that and then the open source variants have been put on top of that uh, again that's one of the massive benefits of open source generally is that even though firefox has little you know the artwork of firefox basically is has intellectual property attached to it um that can be stripped and it can be switched out and then you know voila you've got uh, you've got ice cat ice weasel whatever uh, and i believe ice dove is the thunderbird equivalent so Debian are very dogmatic to their their personal philosophies, and and and, and I, I dogmatic is a term that's usually used in a negative context, but to today and and to me it's not. It's it's um, you know I guess loyalty might be a might be a better word for it. Um, the idea and 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 there are you know their their full um, outlook on 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 their project and what it should look like is 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 quite lengthy lengthy, but. Uh, one of the the big things they say is that um, the pieces of software that construct their operating system should by and large be um, constructed of, of pieces of software that do like one job and do it really really well without bloat without um, too much fluff without uh, putting too much of a strain on the system and I can imagine there's a number of reasons why this philosophy is so important to a lot of them uh, part of it might be because um, Debian is uh, chopped and changed about so uh, so much downstream that keeping it as tight as possible upstream uh, allows for for more um, uh, for more ideas to form out of it. Um, it's generally a good coding discipline anyway to keep things as lightweight as possible. At least that's how I see it. That's one of the reasons why I'm an LX LXDE fan is I consider it to to just to be uh, to be better at what it does, not try not not, not tries to to do too much. Um, and a lot of the criticisms of System D that I've I've read about and that I've seen is that it's it's like it's one of those pieces of software that kind of does too much and and then, and then brings with it bloat. Uh, and on top of that, um, there are a um, uh, it's about the readability of the um, config files that set it up and 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 so forth. And this is where I sort of uh, get far far um, removed from it because I. Again, not being a developer, not being a system administrator or anything like that, um, it's it's something that that um, I kind of have to take their word on on that it's um, something that's going to affect them in a, in a much bigger way. So um, 
Yeah, like, uh, I can't, I can't, like, well, first of all, I really wouldn't want there to be a fork of the project. The reason I, I, I think a fork of the project would be detrimental to just everyone involved would be that Debian is a community of some of the best developers going. Um, it really, really is. It's, it's, a, it's a, it's a brain trust, uh, and 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 it's, it's done nothing but give fantastically constructive and amazing projects to the world. There are things that Debian have done for us that we, you know, that, that we'll never know, um, and uh, and and will be of infinitely, you know, of infinite importance to us. Um, Debian has been involved with, you know, with uh, everything from huge, great server farms to uh, space exploration. There have been space projects which have adopted the Debian operating system. So, um, so I don't, I, you know, seeing a rift in the community in a way kind of breaks my heart because, um, you know, uh, because that is. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just maybe it's a, it's a bit of a bump down to earth that that um, you know the world isn't perfect. I guess, um, but yeah, I hope uh, my biggest hope is that they actually just resolve this difference. Uh, I, I don't personally care how it's done, uh, and, and I don't think I should. I, it's not my place to, to to put my nose in and, and and have an opinion where it's not necessarily warranted and certainly not constructive. Um, but I, I would hate to see a fork. And to be honest, I think the people who dislike System D w kind of, in a way, at least feel partly the same way. I, I'm sure they don't want to fork a Debian um, because that that's that would just be so much so much work, and it would uh, you know be a division. And I kind of feel that that if if uh, any number you know if any number of those developers actually walked out on on um, on Debian, then um, then Debian and uh, and the fork would suffer, I guess, um, just just through through not having a united community. It would you'd be you know two halves, I guess. Anyway, that's just my thought on it. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below, either related or non-related to this. If you have any thoughts on um, System D, SysV in it. Um, please again leave them down in the comment section below. If you have any corrections, if I've made any factual mistakes, please definitely leave them down in the comment section below because uh, I probably have. I've probably misunderstood the situation wildly um, and, uh, and, and there usually are some pretty fantastic additions in the comment section of my videos anyway when it comes to these technical side of things. Um, so please do, uh, do get involved with the discussion. And um, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now. So this is just the end slate, just to let you guys know uh, what other kind of projects I'm working on. For those of you that don't know, I have a, a second channel where I do more informal, casual type stuff. And I also have a gaming channel. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, uh, you might want to check those out. Also, if you want to ask me any questions or just have a chat about whatever it is that I've been talking about in this video, feel free to check out my Twitter and my Tumblr as well. I spend a fair amount of time on them. Toodaloo!